Good evening, everybody. This is the DC in Smoke. Give me just a second here uh, to make sure that you can hear me. Um, start by to give you an update on what is going on with the situation that took place uh, last Monday night, one week ago from today, at the Rocky Mount. Um, City Council meeting. Let me see. Let me see here. Okay, let me do this. Okay, let me see. Um. Okay, I see. Uh, you can hear me, so I will continue on. Uh, again, this is the DCN Smoke coming to you live on this Monday afternoon around uh three. 33, November the 20th, 2023. The issue today, the topic today will be Rocky Mount Corruption. Who dropped the ball? Mayor Sandy Robinson, Robert Hassel, Police Chief, Keith Rogers, City Manager, and Officer C.L. Elliott, Patrol Services Division. Now, I'm going to start from the beginning. On last Monday evening, I spoke during the public comments at the Rocky Mount City Council meeting. I congratulated all those who had gotten re-elected. I said... Who are you accountable to? Because it appears that you are not accountable to the people who put you there. So my question was, who are you accountable to? And I walked away. Okay. Several comments later, Bronson Williams come up, addresses the council, and at the end of his speech, he says um, something to the fact that you have a person that do not live in Rocky Mount, that do not pay taxes, and do not have a utility bill, and that be Camillus Butch Dancer the second. He did that from the podium. Now, mind you, I didn't address any person, especially by name and no citizens, when I was at the podium. When he made that comment, I responded so everybody could hear. I said, I will continue. And he said that he would see me after the meeting. And I said, you don't need to see me anywhere. He went to his seat. After the meeting was over, and, and during this time, now I'm thinking that he would approach me in the parking lot. Not in the council chambers or wherever. But um, I had no idea because I would have been looking at him uh, when the meeting was over if I felt like he was going to address me in the council chambers, which I'm still trying to figure out um, who he's supposed to be to tell me what I can say and do uh, in the council meeting. Okay, after the meeting was over, he walked up behind me. I heard him uh, ask me, what is my issue with him? Okay. Now, when somebody got an issue with somebody, the person that they got an issue with, I've never been in a fight, a physical fight in all my life. But I would think the person that, that got an issue with someone is the one that approached the person that they got an issue with. So, I didn't approach him. He approached me. So I feel that he's the one that has the issue against me because I don't have one against anybody. Um, so he was trying to talk to me and I said, I'm not talking to you repeatedly, repeatedly. And his mom and daddy came down trying to get in my face as well. The police, well, actually, I think it was Elton Daniels. It happened so fast, 
I believe it was Sister City Manager Elton Daniels who first got in between us. And he was telling them, y'all go ahead. And the police came over and he was telling them, the mom, dad, and son, to go ahead. Nobody was talking to me because I was not out of character. So nobody needed to talk to me. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, while they were walking away, uh, the dad said, stop talking about my son. And I said, you tell your son to stop talking about me. And I don't know exactly what the mom was saying. But I know the dad said, don't talk about my son. I said, you tell your son, don't talk about me. Because I had said earlier, oh, boy, you're stupid because I'm old enough to be your daddy. <coughs> and when his dad said, um, um, stop talking about my son, I said, tell him to stop talking about me. He said, because I know where you live. Okay, here we go again. Another threat. Because I felt threatened from the podium. Um... Now he said he li he knows where I live. Well, um, folk don't go to your house. I don't go to people's house unless I'm invited. And definitely don't go in those type of situations. So I'm trying to figure out <coughs> um, why he feel like he can come to my house just because he know where I live. Hell, I know where they live. What they got to do with anything? I know where a whole lot of folk live. And then you can look it up online and see people's address. So um, I, I didn't take that lightly. Um, okay, now all are still in the room. Um, I felt like, um, point number one, the, um, uh, mayor should have said, um, officer, go talk to the chief, the chief right in there, along with all the officers, go talk to Bronson Williams and tell him this will not be tolerated. You don't need to be, um, uh, whatever you got, you need to take it off the property of the city. Okay, that was not done. Well, when the meeting was over, with all those police in there and the chief, somebody should have been in place to uh, watch us to see what was going on. That did not happen. Okay, after the confrontation, um, you would have thought, like the judge did today, you would say, one of y'all leave and the other one stay until the other one is gone. That did not happen. Or, like I told the chief, that um, you should have escorted each out if they went out at the same time. However, um, I went out by myself. Um, when I went down the stairs, they went through the elevator. And I think I heard Bronson say, um, how he get in front of us? I could be wrong, but I thought that's why I heard him say. So when we get outside, when we're getting downstairs, um, the officer that signed you in was standing at the door peeping out. Quite sure he didn't know what was going on. So he, um, I went on outside. I know Ernie Jones came through us. We had a little briefing and, um, Attorney Clay Ev uh, 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 Turner, and we had a little briefing. Um, as I was walking to my car, and mind you, I kept my, um, my kept videoing because I normally turn it off in the in the, in the council chambers when the meeting is over. But I kept it on so that when I went to the outside, you know what would take place. So uh, the mother walked by saying, "Put that on Facebook. Put that on Facebook." I didn't respond because. Anybody in their right mind know that I was doing it live, so it was already on Facebook. Okay. I was told that Bronson made some comments, um, but by that time I had got in the car, they said they heard him talking to someone. Okay. That is what happened that night at the council chambers. On um, Tuesday, I went down to um, get an appointment with the chief, and... I uh, waited and waited and waited. So around 10 o'clock, I said, I'm going to Nashville to the master office. So I goes to the master office. He was not there. Had a thing up saying he'd be back at 1030. So he comes in through the door, never made it to his office. And he asked me, what did I need? And I told him I want to talk to him about a no contact order and whatever else that I could 
um, speak to him about as far as what had taken place. So, um, I told him that uh, what had happened, and I said, and I was told that um, the uh, person had a weapon, and they had spoken to someone saying that's what, uh, uh, they had the weapon on the dashboard saying what they was going to do when they see me, they was going to confront me when they see me. So all this running through my mind the night of when he said he would see me after the meeting. Okay. So then um, the master said, well, if they want to shoot you, they'll shoot you. And you just need to go get you a gun. I was like, what? So this is what we do? So because I'm a black man, um, you see me as a thug or, or some type of foolishness. Now that, that, that threw me. So I left, walked out of the building and won't go on a minute. I went back in cause I didn't get his name and I go back in and he don't put another sign on the door saying he'll be back at 1130 cause this was around 1030, something 11, going on 11. And now he puts a sign on the door saying he'll be back. At 11.30. I mean, I just walked out of the, the building. So, I made some phone calls to the sheriff's offices and um and everything. So, I had to go to, um I know how no contact orders work because I had did one on uh the Reverend Roosevelt Higgs some years ago. Um, that I was successful to getting because of his threats um uh, uh and harassment. So, I went to my sister's house, did the paperwork and... So, you had to go before the judge, but the judge was out that day. So, while I was there, I got a phone call from House uh, Secretary, the Chief Secretary, said he would meet with me at 2.30. Well, when I go meet with Housel, um, he says, um, I tell him, I said, read this paper right here before we begin our conversation. I said, this is a courtesy visit. I said, because um, I got an issue with um, how the case how it was handled that night. So he read what I had written, and he brought up two uh, points, and he said, well, um, uh, my officers looked at the cam, the, the body cams, and they didn't hear a threat. I said, well, they were on the other side of the room, and did they look at my video? Because, you know, the city turned theirs off, but my video was right there on us. So he said, um... Well, if you feel like you don't want to file a complaint against my officer, and I didn't know who the officer was. Somebody told me it was an Officer Turner, and I do remember seeing his name because I think he spoke uh, to me earlier. A very nice gentleman. Um, but um, I said, well, y'all need to do something different in, in this room, in the council chambers. I said, because it was not handled properly. And um, I say, so I went on to explain to him. I said, so you don't think, I said, you were in the room. I said, so Chief House, you don't think that um, when he made the comment at the podium that he'll see me after the meeting, you don't think that was a threat? I said, and then when he came up behind me, you, um, uh, I brought uh, blindsided, you don't think that's a threat? When his dad said, he know where I live at. Don't talk about his son. You don't see that as a threat? He said, oh, now I see why you feel it's a threat. I said, but let me explain to you. I know how the process works. I I said, a threat is not a threat until the person that's being threatened feel as if they were threatened. I said, now, that's where I come in. But I know the law makes the final decision. So if I feel threatened, then I go through the process, and if the court see otherwise, the judge or whomever see otherwise, then that's the law. Okay, so um, we um, he asked me, well, what was going on? I feel like both of y'all are two respectable people and all that. So we got into uh, 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 the Facebook stuff and and all that. I said, but tonight I didn't address him. He uh, came for me. So he said, well, um, 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 
I can see how you feel like it's communicating threats. He said, um, you want to file a complaint? I said, really? I was going to talk to the master anyway. I said, so I just stopped by here for a courtesy uh, visit. I said, because I like to file the proper chain of command. So he said, well, uh, if you want to fill out a police report incident, um, I have an officer to do it. And I said, no. And he said, well, you're going to need that if you go to the master office. He said, because the laws have changed and you need to do a police uh, incident. Okay. So I went downstairs. Off, uh, uh, sea Breeze um, walked me downstairs and um, waited for the officer to come. Officer C.L. Elliott came in. I gave him the same uh, document that I gave the chief upstairs, and we spoke, and then he said, I'll do a report. It'll be ready in about two days. He gave me his card and his case number, the case number, and then uh, he said, you can stop back by. I goes back two days later, which was Thursday, and um, asked for the report. I was told I couldn't get it, um, that I had to subpoena it and I said, Well, I'm the victim here, uh, following the charge and I can't get it. I said, Okay. Well, um I called upstairs to the chief office. I told them to tell um uh, Officer C. L. Elliott to give me a call. I called back later and told the secretary to tell Robert Hassel, the chief, to call me. This was Thursday evening. Um I waited all day Friday. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything today. I called back down today and left the same message. I also called to the Rocky Mount City government and left a message with Keith Rogers, our secretary, that I wanted to speak to him. And I also have not heard from him. Okay, so I got to looking into um, the paper I had with the case number on the card he had given me, but I had looked at the, the um, paperwork because there wasn't really nothing on the paper that I received from the police office as far as the police incident. So um, I did see the same case number up there, but I didn't look at the charge. <clears throat> So after speaking to an attorney, um, they said that the 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 uh, the, the um, uh, code that they used was not communicating threats. And I looked up the other code, and it was for an assault on a person. The code for communicating threats is one thing. The code that they put on the police incident is for an assault. I hadn't asked anything about no assault. Don't know where that come from. But I think I know where all this is going. So, um, uh, when I went to, um, uh, to see the judge on Thursday about the no contact order, uh, Judge um, Beth Freshwater, was reading the information and listening to my conversation. And she said that um, uh, when I gave her more into detail um, uh, about um, the threat, she said, well, this is more like communicating threat. She said, I cannot give you um, the the emergency ex parte. Um, this is more like communicating threats. I need to send you downstairs file, so you can file the paperwork so they can be served. So that's what I did. So today when we go in there, this is uh um the judge said called us up. Uh Bronson was not there. Mom and dad was and uh he said y'all ready to hear. I said, Well I want Bronson here because what I gotta say, all three of them need to respond to it. So he asked the daddy. The daddy said, I want to do it today because I took out work and, and uh, uh, um, yeah, he's been harassing my son and all this. And so the judge say, I agree. All y'all need to be here. He said, well, let's look at a court date. So he told the daddy, he said, I hate to see you taking all work. He said that um, I'm going to let you pick the date. 
I ain't have no problem with that. Because all I want to do is uh, continue anyway. That's the way I would go on with my uh, conversation uh, when I said that I want all three of them there. So, first he said January, uh, December, January. So, the dad said January. So, I got to thinking, oh, he wanted to go January because I understand he retired in December. I said, okay. So, then uh, the mama said, well, he asked where we're brought and He said he was out of town. He said he's out of town permanently. So, no. He said he should be back tomorrow, which is Tuesday, day Monday. So, she said, well, um, um, I think he's going out of town again in January. So, uh, December might be better. So, anyway, we come up with a December date. So, there, that's where we stand. Uh, so, um, I know Bronson had posted, somebody sent me something, because I don't go on his page, um, I get the screenshots of all this stuff over the years and, and everything, um, then, uh, about the no contact, uh, a no contact order, and he stand behind what he say, and that's fine. So, I'm just giving y'all an update, uh, from my side, because I was waiting until, um, today to, um, before I talk about it. But it's just so much going on, especially with the corruption. Uh, oh, oh, let me back up. Okay, so then when I went down to talk to the magistrate in Rocky Mount today, uh, when I went to Nashville again, but then I called to Tarboro to see uh, could I do it in Edgecombe County so, so I could go to the Rocky Mount Judicial Center, the famous one that uh, folk won't move downtown. And so when I go in there, Tell the man I want to see the master, and he was like, "Down there, I said, look, I said I don't know where the master office is. I said I've never been here. He said I thought you had been here before. So here we go again. The guy working the door, everything he feel like <laughs> I'm a black man that I don't been down there to the uh, master office before. No, I had not. Um, then when I go up and I talk to the master, then he's saying that um, um, he didn't think um, that it would grant communicating threats but he did not go in the system um chief house told me that the, the, the magistrate would need the code to go in the system from the police incident so that was not done so i left that's when i contacted a lawyer about the um uh, 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 um the about getting the uh subpoena because he said, I need a subpoena to get the uh, police incident. Okay, um, um, the lawyer said, well, they got the wrong code up there. This is for uh, the, the the wrong code. So they sent me the code, and then they sent me the code for communicating threats. And I will be posting that in the comments um, after I get off here. So I just stopped by to give y'all a briefing of what's going on. Um, um, Rocking Mountain Police. Chief making all this money, and then the officers start a salary of 60000 and they cannot return a phone call, the chief, nor the officer, when a person feels they have been threatened. Oh, oh, let me go back. Uh, when I told the um, master over in Rocky Mount about what the master said in Nash County about um, um if a person wants to shoot you, they're going to shoot you and go get you a gun. So when I told him what he had said, he said, now, don't you go get a gun. I'm like, really? That was crazy because I'm a law-abiding citizen. And, I, and he don't even know whether I got a gun or not. He didn't ask me that I had one. And, and I've been through the uh, carry and conceal and all the things that need to be done. So he don't even know whether I got a gun or not. The first question, he should have asked me, did I have one? But which was none of his business. But anyway, um, um, this is where... It all staying. So for anybody, because I keep hearing stuff and people asking me, and I tell them, look at the video, see what happened. And um, well, this is what uh, uh, has taken place up until now. You can, uh, you know, hear what you hear out there. But this is um, uh, what has taken place up until now. Oh, oh, let me go back. Uh, when when the day I said. <laughs> Uh, this has been going on on Facebook. I've been harassing. Really? I'm responding to what folks say on Facebook. I'm a grown, he, he said, uh, 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 he's a grown man from, um, from Pine Top. He's a 61 year old man. So I told him, I said, no. When they said we're going to move the court date to December, I said, yes, let's have it in December before, uh, Christmas Day because I'll be 61 on Christmas Day before my 61 birthday. 
But you know what tickles the hell out of me is if he want to talk about being a grown man, his son is grown. But why he didn't do, be like a grown man and come to me if he uh, felt like he um he felt the way he did? Because I had a whole, I got a whole new outlook on him now. I I I I um uh, I had my reservations about uh the son and the mama because I know what they be doing every day on Facebook. But now I'm the one harassing folk when um um it's documented uh, on 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 the show. But I just found that interesting. Um, I am a black 60-year-old grown-ass man. And if that had been my son in the courtroom that made a statement like that, I would have told him, boy, if you don't get your tail up out of here, I know you're grown. And if you don't, I'm going to ask the police to escort you out. Because you're not going to embarrass me over no foolishness. That's what I would have done. And see, over the years, I have never gotten into uh, if my children had a little spat with uh, another child or, or, or whatever. Never gotten into it. Um, um, I mean, I was aware of it. But I didn't get in it. But anyway, folk... I have said it time and time again, hold me accountable for my actions because I'm going to hold you accountable. Now, I've been doing what I do since the 80s on social media, in the community. We are active in the Democratic Party. Uh, 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 we attend the city council meetings and other meetings. I'm not going to stop doing what I do. Because like I said, I am a grown-ass man, 60 years old, be 61 Christmas Day. And like I said, the other night to see the council meeting, my daddy is at home. Bless his soul, 90 years old, and got more sense than some other folk. But um, you will not, nobody will silence me when I'm out here uh, speaking truth to power. So don't think that I'm going to sit back and allow you to try to discredit me over some foolishness. Because when I speak, I speak truth to power and, and fact check folk and all that. So I don't have a problem with anybody. I don't have an issue with anybody. Until it comes to my character, my family, my livelihood, my job, then that's when it becomes an issue. And now this is the issue I got right now when um, I was, uh, I feel I was threatened and then to say, um, well, come to my house. My family ain't got nothing to do with this. So there you have it, folks. Um, um, so you can cut out the rumors. Well, no, you ain't going to do that because, because see, folk pick sides when, when, when when they don't want to hear the, the whole truth. And like I say, I tell folk all the time, don't take my word for it. Do your own homework. But this right here is me here. So um, I'm telling you, everybody know me. I ain't got nothing to lie about. Um, 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 you know, see, I've been the legal redress chair for the NAACP. So I've been uh, doing this stuff for a long time. But the only problem then is... I couldn't go but so far because those folk had to uh, speak for themselves. But now the ball game has changed. I am in the driver's seat. So here we go. So again, folks, the next court date will be in December. And um, as I said, uh, I feel threatened by what happened. And I understand that that is my opinion and the courts have to do their job so until we meet again this is the dcn smoke coming to you live and anyone that um uh want to talk to me if you got some sense 
Uh, don't call with no foolishness. My number and contact is all over social media. And my telephone number is 252-314-5484. But don't call me with no foolishness because I ain't got time. This is DCN Smoke signing out. Have a good day.